Welcome to the SEI podcast series, a production of Carnegie Mellon University's Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense and operated by Carnegie Mellon University. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcast. My name is Suzanne Miller. I'm a principal researcher here at the SEI, and today I'm very pleased to introduce you to Alan Householder and Art Mannion, both who are researchers in CERT's vulnerability analysis team. Today we are here to talk about their work in threat modeling. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about our guests. Alan Householder, who is new to our show, is a senior vulnerability and incident researcher at the CERT Coordination Center. He's been involved in internet security since his first professional job in 1995, where a few weeks after starting at a Fortune 500 company, he was told, you're the IP and DNS guy, and think about what that meant in 1995, and shortly thereafter was given the responsibility for the entire corporate firewall. His recent work includes being the technical lead developer for the CERT Basic Fuzzing Framework, or BFF, and Failure Observation Engine, also called FOE and research into the security, or insecurity, as you think about it, of the Internet of Things. His research interests include applications of machine learning in software and system security, fuzzing, and modeling of information sharing and trust among computer security incident response teams, which we call CERTs. Art Mannion is a senior member of the Vulnerability Analysis Team in the CERT Coordination Center. He has studied vulnerabilities and coordinated responsible disclosure efforts since joining CERT in 2001, where he gained mild notoriety for saying, don't use Internet Explorer, in a conference presentation. Mannion currently focuses on projects including software component relationships, vulnerability management, and standards of development. Prior to joining the SEI, Mannion was the director of network infrastructure at Hunyata College. Welcome, Art and Alan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So let's start by having you talk to us about what threat modeling is and how does it figure into today's complex cybersecurity landscape. So threat modeling is a, a process that helps you reason about a system that you care, the system that you care about is security. Um, it's been popularized by Microsoft over the last uh, 10 or 11 years. Uh, they, they actually published a book called Threat Modeling in 2004 and that went through a few editions. There's a new, a new book uh, by Adam Shostak called Threat Modeling Designing for Security which came out in 2014 um, and that's probably the current uh, definitive resource for learning about threat modeling, getting started with it and understanding the landscape. And, and threat modeling isn't really what you think it is. Threat modeling is not about modeling the threats that could happen. Right. It's really about modeling aspects of the system and how it responds. So say a little bit more about that. Right. So it's, it's, it's really a, a way of thinking about a system and understanding the various attack surfaces that system may have. And there might be multiple layers of attack, of attack surface mm -hmm. uh, in the same way you can think of, uh, you know, say a, a, a prison or a fort might have a, a fence out at the, at the outside. They might have locks on the doors at the perimeter. They may also have rooms inside that are locked and then a safe inside that. Um, all of those things could be different attack surfaces and you can you can address vulnerabilities at, e at each of those. And each of them has different vulnerabilities. Right. So, so part of threat modeling is understanding the different character of vulnerabilities that could happen and, in different layers. Right. And also understanding the uh, the assets that you're trying to protect and, and where they are sure. and, and which, which possibilities you have for defending them. Okay. And so you use this concept of threat modeling in your research. How do you do that? We've actually used it a few times uh, in, in research we've done on uh, Internet of Things devices as mm -hmm. well as on uh, automotive systems, the, uh, connected automotive systems, um, in part because we often are, hand, are asked to analyze systems that we don't, we weren't the developers on, we haven't necessarily been involved in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but somebody wants to know, well, what vulnerability should I be concerned about in this kind of system? So we'll go out and understand that system. And part of the way we do that is by using threat modeling. And so techniques. you're looking for patterns that can be seen after the system is already in operation because you don't have understanding right. necessarily of the design parameters, the data parameters, the things that the developers would know. You have to look at the system as it stands as it in is. operations. Right. Right. So that's a little different than trying to understand the vulnerabilities you're introducing as you design a system. Right. 
And oh. that, that's another aspect of this too, right? The, the data assurance kind of work is a design aspect and threat, how does threat modeling play into that? So uh, you talked about sort of the finished system and, and you can certainly do threat modeling there, but um, it's probably worth mentioning you, you could use threat modeling techniques at different po points in the process mm -hmm. and that could include not having a finished product, but just having, if you did have design specs, you could still reason about, you know, this, this design spec says to have a network interface, so that might be something you'd consider uh, an exposure point, which right. could, could be a, a path for threat. Uh, so even without a finished system, you can you can potentially do some threat modeling um, about the system you're, you're trying to work on. And I'm assuming that the more modeled, as it were, your system is, the easier it is to do that. When you're looking at documents, it's a lot harder to, you're, you have to create mental models, sure. but we have some modeling languages that mm -hmm. are starting to become used that actually give you more explicit models about that, and is, is that something that, that you're starting to work with? Um, I'm, I'm not personally, but to your point, yes, if the system's already well modeled, it's probably an easier lift from there to, to doing some threat modeling. A lot of the threat modeling techniques we've looked at, they assume you don't have that in place already, so they have techniques. In fact, there's actually a card game to sort of get you to think about the exposures and the surfaces, and, and you need to do just enough modeling to, to do some of the basic okay. threat analysis. So. So, that, so it is possible to do reasonable threat modeling without having very complicated kinds of models that are already in place. Sure, there are, there are relatively lighter weight threat modeling approaches that are still okay. useful. Okay, yeah. all right. So it can be, a, it can be as simple as, as drawing diagrams of the system and talking through that, mm -hmm. those diagrams sure. with, with uh, experts. The classic whiteboard approach. Right. Um, and Art mentioned the, the card game, which is an interesting, interesting way of sort of facilitating that conversation. So the card game has various prompts. Uh, it's called, the card game is called uh, Escalation of or Elevation of Privilege. Okay. Um, it came out from Microsoft. And it has various sort of conversation prompts that suggest ways that you might have different problems in a system that you should explore. Uh, so okay. given, the mo given the system that you're analyzing, uh, is this know, particular, does this, does this threat is this apply, relevant? is it relevant, yeah. and yeah. You, can, okay. you can play okay. it that way. Okay. Um, but we actually have, so some of the research I've been involved in was with uh, the architecture analysis and design language. Yes, uh, AADL. AADL. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that when I was when I was yeah, talking yeah. about modeling and, systems. And the reason that that became interesting is because one of the threat modeling techniques is to build is attack trees. An attack tree is is essentially just a uh, a tree diagram of uh, the root of the tree is a bad thing that the attacker can do or okay. or a event you don't want to occur. Uh, and then each of the branches of those trees are different preconditions that lead up to that bad okay. event. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you know. Someone stole your car while you left your you left the the car unlocked, and you left your keys in the car, and those are the two events. So the way you can mitigate that is take your keys with you sure. and lock your car, right? Um, but attack trees are also uh, very closely related to fault trees, mm -hmm. and sure. AADL has been designed. Uh, we've done some extensions at the SEI on. Uh, applying fault tree analysis to yes. AADL models. Mostly for safety right. so far, but I and can see so, where this would so translate like, very easily so into this past the threat year, modeling. Right. So this past year, we actually had um, a, a project where we looked at applying, or doing, getting threat models out of AADL models. And one of the things we found is that as security analysts, learning AADL is pretty tricky. Mm. But if you already know AADL, then there's a potential there for, uh, for collaboration. For collaboration okay. and, and, and that's actually going to be some ongoing research we've got going this nice. year uh, to continue that work in, in the AADL crossing over into threat modeling lands. Cool. And so are there other, um, are there specific modeling languages and things that are being developed to make that the threat modeling itself easier to do? Is that a direction that we're engaged in or others that we're collaborating Nothing with are engaged of. in? So this is not yet made that, that sort of leap into we need to have our own tool set for this. Right. One, okay. of, one of the things that I noticed actually when we were doing the Internet of Things modeling um, or project what was in investigating attack trees and, and recognizing that connection there to fault trees, um, I went and looked at a lot, of, uh, a lot of research on fault tree analysis and fault tree analysis made it to where you know, NASA is using fault tree analysis with, uh, you know, as math. They're treating it as, right, as math, right. math and modeling, and you know, you can do calculations and proofs and those sorts of things. Whereas attack trees, 
have kind of gone the way of drawing diagrams and pictures in Visio, but there's okay. no there's no real there's not a there's, syntax there's no, there's and no deep analysis and, and things going on there. Yeah, okay. So I think that's that's actually a potential area for future work is is okay. uh, bringing some of the fault tree analysis techniques back into the attack tree land um, and. Looking for synergies between this, the right. language approaches and fault trees and right. the domain of, of threat modeling right. and attack, attack trees in particular. So is that, what, is that where your research is going? Where is your work going in relation to threats and how you use them in, in other so that, research? That's where, uh, like I said, there's, there's the AADL uh, and threat modeling project that's going on. Um, the other thing that we've, we, our work has been more on uh, vulnerability discovery. So mm -hmm. we're asked to take a look at this system and let us know what sort of vulnerabilities uh, it, it has or might have. Sure. You know, where should you know, organizations that want to direct their testing on a system that they're not familiar with. So we've done that uh, for uh, Internet of Things devices. We looked at a, uh, uh, an internet connected light bulb system, which was kind of interesting because it, ha it has, the system itself is, is, there's a light bulb that has uh, a wireless connection to a little device that sits on your LAN, and okay. that, that device in turn can talk to a cloud-based service, which also has a, a Android or, or iOS right. app for your phone. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you can press some buttons on the app on your phone that goes up to a cloud service, comes back to the little device on your network, which then tells the light bulbs to blink or change colors or right. anything like that. Um, so we, we build a threat model for that, which let us see that you know there's a lot of different attack surfaces sure. on there. Each you know the you can even talk. without your card game, I can think right, of several. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, but it helped us direct our testing so that we were able to then use uh, the CERT Tapioca tool uh, to do man in the middle attacks and okay. do an analysis of of the the gateway device. And we actually found some vulnerabilities in that, which turned out were part of the operating system that the the little device runs. Um, from that knowledge, we were able to then go look for those vulnerabilities in other things Others. that ran the same operating sure. system. Right, right, right. Um, eventually leading us to a uh, a lot of uh, home routers and, and problems that are that are occurring in home routers as well. Same exact same problem, just a different domain. You know, in right. one case it's Internet of Things, the other it's home routers. Um, so that that's one way the threat modeling has been useful to us. The other place that we've used it is in um, in the AADL work that I mentioned. Uh, our model. Our, 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 the system that we were modeling was a an internet connected car, um, and we didn't have a car. Lots we were, we were just, of attack surfaces in that right. domain. Right, and and actually the interesting thing about that is we did this modeling in 2014, um, and one of the things that came out of it was well, internet connected radio can talk on the to, can talk to the the devices in the car, which includes potentially the adaptive cruise control that, that controls the throttle and the brakes on mm -hmm. the car. Um, and many of the attacks that were demonstrated this year at Black Hat and DEF CON were things that came up in our threat modeling game that we played almost a year ago. Um, and this was with, you know, we didn't have a car, we weren't analyzing the car directly, right. we were just, you know, drawing pictures on the whiteboard, talking through the process, and we came up with most of the vulnerabilities that in turn were validated by other people's okay. research that, that came out this year's so really, conferences. in terms of organizations who would want to take advantage of this research, one of the takeaways is you don't have to be completely sophisticated to do this. You can just use thought experiments, some heuristics right. in terms of how to look at these problems and get some reasonable vulnerabilities that, that you can then use to inform your testing, to inform your supply chain choices, other things like that. So that's, that's actually very important mm -hmm. uh, for, for organizations to be able to have that understanding that they don't have to have the most sophisticated tools in the world to be able to address this problem. Right. Yeah, and that's actually, I'd like to really reinforce that point. So um, there's another aspect of our work that's much more operational we receive reports of security bugs and vulnerabilities and things, sure. and we, we process them and try to see them through to a coordinated disclosure process with you know fixed software and announcements and minimize harm to everyone involved. Mm -hmm. So this happens, and we are seeing, uh, Alan's mentioned light bulbs so far, right. cars. Yep. Uh, he said Internet of Things a couple of times. There are lots and lots of things. They are connected. Uh, the manufacturers making these things might have been a business for 50 or 60 years. They're great at making cars or refrigerators or light bulbs. They've now, in some cases, literally bolted on a small sure. embedded computer yeah, yeah. with a number of network connections. 
My impression, and I can't prove this in any way, is that there's not a lot of threat modeling going on. They know what the refrigerator does. When you stick the embedded network connection to it, there wasn't a threat modeling process to say, now, now what's changed right. about the model yeah. to this? So secure, why do you care about security of your refrigerator? It keeps the food cold. It's like electrically safe. I don't know what else it has to yeah. be. Now it has to have potentially updates, right. modern but if software. It's, and if it's connected to my electrical attacks, system, right. if I'm trying to do adaptive power sure. management, you have home, home now it's in my electrical right. system. And now my electrical system has a vulnerability. So yeah. it's, it's, it's just an observation based on the, the, the sure. types of reports we're seeing. Home routers are another example. There are these device-like, thing-like, connected things, devices, IoT, uh, that that are, they're new to the internet connectivity, and they haven't done some basic threat modeling right. with, with that change to the system. Uh, we're seeing vulnerabilities, you know, debug ports left turned on, default passwords, very basic types of vulnerabilities that threat modeling probably would have caught, even very yeah. lightweight threat modeling. So we, one of the things we might see, I don't know if this is uh, part of your standards work, is <laughs> I can envision you know, places like the uh, um, UL labs adding standards that require this as part of their certification because because as you say the 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 people that have been developing these kinds of, of things have done it without really knowledge or understanding of of the implications of security in as soon as they add any kind of computing power right. onto their light bulb or, right. or anything and, and else. another another new area here as you mentioned UL you know light bulbs might not be well UL might cover light bulbs but vehicles Avionics, these are yeah, regulated yeah, industries already, yeah. and they already have rules for safety in place. So now you have to con you know, consider core network and computer security has to be part of the safety. It is discussion. part of safety, that's right. right. In, this, in these cases, and so that, we're talking with those regulators, in fact, because that's a new area for them sure. as well. So, right. so there's standards work, there's tools work. I think mm -hmm. you guys are gonna be busy dealing with this stuff for a little we while. already are. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I do want to thank you both for joining us. I think uh, you're probably going to scare a few people that need to be <laughs> thinking about things a little differently, and sometimes that's part of our job. Um, but I, I do uh, want to tell our listeners that if you're interested in learning more about this work, you want to visit the CERT CC, that's the Coordination Center blog, and that's at insights, I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot S-E-I dot C-M-U dot E-D-U. I want to thank you for joining us today. Remember that today's podcast is going to be housed at sei.cmu.edu slash podcast. It's also going to be available on the Carnegie Mellon iTunes U site. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.